Well, welcome. My name is Deacon Matthew Halbach. I'm a deacon of the Diocese of Des Moines, and I'm also the Executive Director of Catechesis for William H. Sadler. Very happy to be here with you on this Good Friday morning prayer service. Uh, here we are in the second big day of our Triduum, and uh, it's a strange kind of uh, experience this year, isn't it, uh, to be at home? Uh, but um, this is what we have to do. And I've got a, a little kind of creative idea for families to celebrate Good Friday at home. And I'll share that in a moment. Uh, but as usual, a housekeeping item where you can find us on facebook.com slash sadly religion. And then uh, we also have for posting petitions and all things morning prayer, our sadly religion.com slash morning prayers. And finally, for other faith formation resources, you can check us out on sadlyreligion.com slash online learning. Okay, so what I have with me, what am I going to do for Good Friday? That's a great question. <laughs> what you see on the screen is probably what a lot of people will be doing for Good Friday, gathering around a TV or a laptop or something like that. Um, so what I have with me is we have our crucifix. This is a very big one. We have a lot of crucifixes in this house. Um, you just collect them over the years. And then when I got ordained, that was like the gift to give. And, and so we had probably at one time 20 plus crucifixes. Uh, we started giving some away. We actually have a lot of them uh, around our kitchen area on the walls and stuff. And it's always fun when friends come over for the first time and they see, they sit down with us for dinner and they're looking around at all the crucifixes. And, and uh, somebody goes, I remember one time somebody said, uh, should I take my shoes off? This seems like a really holy space. And uh, I'm like, well, you know, uh, we're having chips and dip and eating burgers. Uh, you know, it's, it's just our kitchen. Um, anyway, uh, what, what are we doing for Good Friday? Well, since we can't be at Matt or at the communion service, we don't have mass on Good Friday. We have a communion service. Uh, since we can't be there together, um, a great thing to do would, of course, be watch it on, on online. But you can also read the gospel at home, okay, with your family. And a big part of this celebration is the veneration of the cross. To venerate the cross means to show some sign of honoring. And why is that? Why do we want to honor the cross? Well, that is the instrument of salvation. Jesus dies on the cross, and through his death and resurrection, we are offered eternal life. Uh, we are saved. And so it's, it's a, uh, the, the most critical and core sign of our faith, uh, as we will in just a moment. We sign ourselves with the cross. Uh, we begin and end everything with the cross. So we have this crucifix here and we'll pass it around. Uh, I'll read the gospel and I'll talk about what venerating the cross means with our kids and then we'll pass it around. And to venerate, some people just hold it, you know. Uh, sometimes people will kiss the cross. Um, sometimes people don't want to hold it for whatever reason. They just don't feel, there's all kinds of feelings. It's a very kind of powerful uh, gesture, right? A powerful, um, uh, sacred gesture. So sometimes they just want to look at it. So I'll hold it uh, if one of my kids doesn't want to hold it themselves. But it's a great way to continue uh, in the spirit of this holy day and uh, to do this with your family in a very special way. So what I would like to do is get on with the gospel today, and it is a very long gospel. So what we're going to do is start about halfway through uh, for the sake of the time we have for this morning prayer service. Um, of course, the full gospel you can read anytime. So just keep that in mind that this is a, a, an adaptation or starting about halfway through. So let's quiet ourselves, be mindful of God's presence, uh, be mindful of his love for us, be mindful of, as we've heard through the last couple of weeks, uh, the joy and peace that he has uh, in going to the cross for us. He will have this agony because he is uh, a divine person, but who is also uh, human. He's fully man as much as he is fully God. But ultimately, he knows that what he's doing by dying on the cross is going to bring us salvation, which he wants nothing more than, than to do. So we quiet ourselves and we thank the Lord for his great love. And we begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> I read from the Holy Gospel according to John. <clears throat> when the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four shares, a share for each soldier. 
They also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top down. So they said to one another, let's not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it will be, in order that the passage for scripture might be fulfilled that says, they divided my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. This is what the soldiers did. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there whom he loved, he said to his mother, woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine, so they put a sponge soaked in wine on a sprig of hyssop and put it into his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, it is finished. And bowing his head, he handed over the spirit. Now, since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one, that Jesus, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and that they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and then of the other one who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust his lance into his side and immediately blood and water flowed out. An eyewitness has testified and his testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth so that you also may come to believe. For this happened so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled. Not, one of, not, not a bone of it will be broken. And again, another passage says, they will look upon him whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, secretly a disciple of Jesus for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate if he could remove the body of Jesus and Pilate permitted it. So he came and took his body. Nicodemus, the one who had first come to him at night, also came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about 100 pounds. They took the body of Jesus and bound it with burial cloths along with the spices, according to the Jewish burial custom. Now in the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there because of the Jewish preparation day, for the tomb was close by the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This is the moment that Jesus was born for. This is the moment that he came into this world for. Uh, he, he came in as a sacrifice. He came in to be our atonement, uh, to make up for our sins, to, to carry, as the prophet Isaiah says, to carry uh, our sins on his shoulders and by his wounds, we will be healed. Um, our faith is rooted in, uh, our faith, I'll, I'll, I'll step back a second, our faith, our Christian faith, the Catholic faith, is so unique in that it's rooted in a God who sacrifices himself for his people, and in, in a way that's not paralleled anyway, in any other religion, in any other philosophy, or any other ideology, um, and more than ideology, this happened in history. God became man, and this man, this God-man, Jesus, offered himself up for us because of his great love. This is a very sad and dark moment, as you can see in our, our image here, a very famous image of the, of the crucifixion. Notice the little light, the only light really in the picture around Jesus' head. He's the source of all light. He's the source of all hope. He is the source of all salvation. He's the source of all happiness. And here on this darkest of days in the liturgical year and the darkest of days in human history as God became man and the God man dies for us. Yet this little light begins to shine and spread. And it begins to shine and spread uh, as we'll hear in Easter Sunday with the resurrection stories through the women that were most faithful to him. Through Mary, through Mary Magdala, uh, and Mary, the wife of Clopas, uh, they go back to the apostles and spread the good news. Um, but it's through these, these women, it's through these initial followers that this little light begins to spread and spread its light in, uh, like a beacon uh, across the world and across history. 
So we're very, uh, this is a moment of quiet today. This is a moment of reverence and of solemnity, um, but at the same time, allow it to be a day of joy. Allow it to be a day of thanksgiving. Make it a time for you and your family to come together and just tell the Lord what you're thankful for around the table. Take that crucifix if you have one or a cross, uh, share that sign with each other. Uh, just make the sign of the cross together as a family. Some way to acknowledge this great love that God gives us in Christ Jesus. Okay, what I'd like to do now is we come to our petitions. So if you're on with us, if you're able to find us, uh, we had very we had a difficulty trying to get on Facebook today. We're so sorry, um, but we posted a message saying join us on Zoom, and you can always join us on Zoom uh, for every live broadcast. Uh, but this is the time in the in the prayer service where we have live petitions. So I invite you to share any petitions you have, things you'd like us to pray for. <clears throat> Please pray for those of us who are very stressed about our jobs. Absolutely. I don't know who's not stressed about their jobs right now. Everybody's, you know, vulnerable. Uh, and um, it's just one of these times where we ha we're forced to, to even let go a little more and trust in God, which is very difficult and very painful. Please pray for everyone that's in the hospital that are sick and the nurses. Thank you so much for that uh, prayer. Um, this time uh, has really shown a light, since we're talking about light, has shown a light on how important healthcare workers are, those first responders, uh, how thankful and grateful we are for them. Um, also our teachers, uh, just on people in general pulling together and, and for, this is a time for people to realize how the roles that others play and how valuable they are, absolutely. For the teachers who've been working so hard to teach while trying to learn new technology and be caring, absolutely. I'm thankful for sadly a religion. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Thank you very much. And Deacon Matt, uh, through these quarantine days, I'm getting, uh, I'm blushing. I'm so grateful for these mornings. Well, thank you. Uh, we're thankful to have you with us. And it's just a little way to, to be with you during this difficult time. Thank you for your prayers also that we invite the resurrection into our lives this Easter, dying to ourselves and rising with Christ. Thank you, that was beautiful. Life's little deaths and resurrections every day. Mm -hmm. and I always throw in a petition myself. Oh, for students with special needs who are struggling to adapt to online learning. Very thoughtful, thank you very much for that. Um, for my girlfriend's 30 year old daughter just diagnosed with breast cancer. Pray for speedy recovery and for health. I wanna pray also for Val and Ronnie. And I wanna pray, uh, my petition is that, uh, just a Thanksgiving that as probably many of you have experienced um, either with friends or loved ones, your children, whomever, um, this has been a really difficult time, obviously. You can't state that enough. However, uh, there's been a lot of fruit that's come out of this experience, uh, particularly in this quality time opportunity with family and just so much snuggle time, so much time to talk, <clears throat> get to know each other better. <laughs> it's amazing how I can live with these people I call my family, and yet I don't, I don't know them as well as I thought I did. And then you start spending hours and hours, day after day after day, and you're like, oh my gosh, I just, I'm, I'm surprised by, especially my kids, how wonderful they are, their little personalities. For the elderly who are alone in homes and, and facilities, and for a parishioner who is dying. So we bring all these prayers together to the Lord. We offer them up to you, Lord. Please grant them according to your time and in your gracious will, amen. Thank you once again for, uh, I'm sorry, we got a prayer wall. That's my bad. Let's roll the prayer wall.
Lord, we ask you to bless all of these petitions and to answer them according to your time and in your gracious will. Amen. You can always visit us at sadlyreligion.com slash morning prayers and post petitions. Uh, again, thank you so much for everybody for sharing out these videos with friends and family, um, using your Facebook page and other social media to do that. May God bless you for that service. You really are being disciples and sharing the good news. Um, so thank you. So let's close with a blessing. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you this Good Friday.